Alright guys, so today I want to talk about one of the most impressive, one of the most striking ball python morphs on the market today. And it's pretty much a hidden gem among ball python keepers. It's only been discovered five years ago in Ghana, West Africa. And I picked one up last season and I brought it to a bunch of females. And I, without that one male, I wouldn't have had such a success selling reptiles, selling snakes at the reptile shows and the gene responsible for my success is the bamboo. So when you're playing the ball python market, you're kind of looking at prices and availability, you really have to have the right snake, the right gene at the right time. And for me, I went to a lot of reptile shows here in Colorado in the United States of America before I actually decided to purchase uh, this bamboo. And I was looking around at all the tables at all the shows and I couldn't see a single bamboo. And, and you know the price kind of fluctuates as far as the market and the availability. So usually in the fall, everything's really cheap because there's an abundance of hatchlings and everyone is kind of competing against each other. And as you get further into the winter and the spring, the availability dries up and the price gets higher and higher. And I actually <laughs> decided I bought somebody's collection of females and wanted a really nice male to, to go with those females to breed them and, uh, and make something really unique. And the thing that I came up with is a bamboo. And, and I looked at Morph Market, there was only one mature bamboo available. And it was absolutely stunning. And, and, and male bamboos, back then they were selling, I'd say, for about five or $600. The guy wanted $1,200 for this. And I shelled out the cash because it was a full, big male, ready to go, ready to breed my females. And let me tell you, that investment paid off. So you guys know we're coming up on the next ball python breeding season and I'm pairing up my snakes. It's actually time to rotate some of these and I have my bamboo in with my normal female here and he was really in deep shed when I put him in here and it looks like he shed and I was kind of looking at his tail over here just a couple minutes ago I, I opened it up and it looks like his tail is not locked with this female. So I'm going to pull him out. He's got, he's just went through a fresh shed. And we'll see what kind of a mood he's in. <laughs> and yeah, his tail is definitely not locked. And he's pretty much around this female. So let me pull him out and just kind of show you what my mature male looks like. <laughs> if I can get him out here. And he is a really, really stunning, really impressive snake. And just the standalone, it's just a single gene animal, and you breed it with a normal, and you'll get 50% bamboos, which is pretty incredible. And this guy is just a real stunner, a real good looker. He looks really, really stunning for any collection, I'd say. Um, he's just a really incredible, impressive snake. Okay, when I got into the bamboos, I really didn't know what I was getting into as far as the temperament and uh, how they would feed, how they would breed, any genetic defects, <laughs> on and on and on. And come to find out there are no really known genetic defects like a head wobble or a duck bill or <laughs> kinking or anything that I, can, that I can find anywhere. And I haven't really had any defects at all from my breeding uh, last year. And I hatched out quite a few bamboos. It was pretty incredible. The other thing I really like about the bamboo gene is this guy and all of his hatchlings, they feed amazingly well. <laughs> they are garbage disposals. They'll, all my other snakes, uh, especially my pides, they're kind of finicky eaters. And these guys will literally jump out of the tub after the rodents. I have no problem at all feeding bamboos. So I don't know if this is the same with all bamboos, but for this particular snake, this is one breeding machine. Every female that I put him with, he locks instantly. And most of the time, he'll stay locked for a whole day, sometimes even two days. So if you're looking for a really good breeder, no genetic defects, something that feeds really well, I think bamboo is the perfect snake. So if you're looking at something similar to bamboo, I would say... Probably the spider is the closest, and here's a spider, and uh, <laughs> this bamboo's going all over the place. But if you kind of look at the patterns, they're pretty similar. I'd say this is about as close as you can get. The only thing with the spider is the spider has a head wobble, but other than that, it's probably the closest you're going to get as far as kind of a broken up spider looking pattern. 
So here's a little hatchling bamboo that came from that male and they keep their color pretty much the same all through their whole life. It's pretty much um, the, the color and the tensity and the pattern. It doesn't really change from when they're a hatchling to when they're an adult. And let me show you some, some genetics. So for example, if we take a bamboo and we cross it with a pastel, the pastel's got the yellow and it has a, pretty much a broken up pattern and <laughs> let me show you what you get when you cross the bamboo with a pastel. So take a look at this. This is one of my little pastel bamboo males and it almost looks exactly like a bamboo. There's not a whole lot of difference between the bamboo and the pastel bamboo. The only thing is it's, I don't know if you can pick this up on camera, but it's a little bit lighter, has a little bit yellow through it, and you can definitely tell by the head. The head's washed out a little bit more compared to just the regular bamboo. Here's another really impressive bamboo female that I have, another hatchling from that same snake. And we can actually uh, mix that with a lesser, and I have a lesser here. A lesser, is, they're both in the blue-eyed leucistic complex, and let me show you what happens when you breed a bamboo to a lesser. So believe it or not, when you pair those two together, a certain percentage of the babies will get one copy of each gene, and you get a bamboo lesser, which is an all-white snake with bright blue eyes. And this snake was definitely uh, one of my most popular snakes at the shows as far as being held. I think probably 20 people wanted to hold this snake. And um, the only problem is, is it's got the bamboo in it, so it's a little bit more expensive compared to your regular blue-eyed leucistic. But for a breeder, this is a really powerful breeder. You cross it with a normal and you get no normals. You get all lessers and all bamboos. Alright, let me show you another impressive combo. Here's another female bamboo. And these little bamboo hatchlings, these are all be for sale at the Reptilian Nation uh, the end of February 2019 at in Denver. And if you mix the bamboo with a calico, and a calico... Uh, this is kind of a low example of a calico, but it, it kind of has uh, uh, a little bit of a pattern breakup on the sides. And if you mix a calico with a bamboo, let me show you what you get. So this little gem will not be for sale at the show. <laughs> this is my male calico bamboo holdback. And look at how reduced the side patterns get. It's pretty incredible. I think this is one of my favorite combos, the calico and the bamboo. And I'm really looking forward to keeping this, holding it back, and breeding it into some more combos to get some more calico bamboo complexes. All right, if you thought that combo was pretty amazing, take a look at this. I am going to add a bamboo and a little bit of calico. And on top of that, I am going to add some beautiful pastel. And let's see what we, got, we get from the trio of those snakes. So take a look at this beauty. This is what magazine covers are all about. This is the, one of the most impressive combos. This is a, a bamboo pastel calico female. And I'm really looking forward to getting this girl up to size so I can, I can breed it back into some other stuff. And you know, I'm really working with this bamboo and trying to get some really crazy combos. I'm thinking maybe uh, adding some caramel albino or some scaleless head or maybe a totally scaleless uh, uh, gene in the mix here. Alright, I just got bit by this little guy. <laughs> Let's go back to the bamboo and there's another uh, gene I want to add to that bamboo and that would be the pinstripe. One of the most impressive combos I think to date is the bamboo pinstripe and let me show you what that looks like. Alright guys, talk about impressive combos. This is one of the most impressive snakes that I produced all year. This is a bamboo pinstripe female and I'm definitely looking to grow her up to get some size on her so she can breed back with other things. And this is one of my one of my favorite combos, I think, for the bamboo. And it, it, the show, I had a few for sale. I sold a couple of them, and people were just in awe over this snake. They couldn't believe it. And in person, it's a lot better than you can even capture on film. It, it almost doesn't even look real. It looks like it's made out of metal or plastic or something. It is really an impressive snake. All right, guys, I'm going to do even one better. I'm going to take the pastel, beautiful pastel, and I'm going to mix it with the pinstripe. 
pinstripes are beautiful too beautiful snake and then I'm going to add a little bamboo on top of it <laughs> and let me show you what happens when you have a bamboo pastel pinstripe so take a look at this beauty this thing doesn't even look real it's kind of like the other one it almost looks like it's made of metal or something it's the bamboo pastel pinstripe and it is really I think one of my most impressive snakes and I only made one of them this year and the interesting thing about this is it almost looks like it has hieroglyphics on the on the back and the the pattern is really interesting and I'm definitely going to hold this one back. I'm holding quite a few of these bamboo combos back. And um, probably selling the, the base morphs at the shows. Okay, so those were some of the combos that I produced this year. It was a really good year for me. I had some really good odds on the bamboo, and I had a lot of I had a lot of bamboo in my display case at the reptile show, and, and it was pretty interesting. A lot of people would walk by, and you know how how people uh, they're just kind of glancing at display cases, and it was like someone grabbed their hair and pulled them back, and they're like, "Look at this snake! It's a bamboo calico or a bamboo pinstripe," and they just couldn't get over how amazing it looked. And I don't think we've really seen a lot of bamboo stuff here in Colorado. And as I was selling at the shows, it was just flying off my table. I sold uh, like 45 snakes this year at the shows. And, and it got to the point where some of the breeders from the other tables were coming up to my display cases and they'd see a whole eight foot row of sold signs and a lot of bamboo stuff kind of remaining. And they were like, hey, I think I need to get into the bamboo project. And, and it's, it's almost like, you know, the more, um, the more desirable it is and the faster it sells, the more people really want to get into it. And you get, kind of get fired up into a frenzy. And I think the bamboo is really kind of kind of going viral here in Colorado kind of picking up steam and I think there's a lot of possibilities as a matter of fact if you look at some of these big breeders they're they're really focusing on you know the clowns and the pides and some of the other kind of mainstream stuff but the bamboo I think it's really kind of a hidden gem within the market that I'm really excited to be working with and I'm really excited to kind of expand into other genes so that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I will see you next time